Chapter 1. Archive Shadows. In the heart of a bustling city stood a university, its ancient stone walls a testament to a storied past that whispered secrets to those who listened closely. Marcus Reed, a third-year history student with an insatiable curiosity for the forgotten corners of history, was one such listener. On a crisp autumn afternoon, he found himself in the dimly lit, dust-filled expanse of the university's main archive, searching for material for his thesis on the city's early 20th century societal transformations. As Marcus sifted through stacks of yellowed papers and leather-bound volumes, his fingers brushed against a small, inconspicuous box tucked away on a neglected shelf. Intrigued by its placement and apparent age, he carefully opened it to find a bundle of letters, their ink faded but legible, bound with a ribbon that crumbled at his touch. The letters were dated over a century ago, penned with an elegant hand that spoke of education and urgency. The words within hinted at a mystery, a crime that had shaken the community to its core, yet there was no record of it in the annals of the cities or the university's official history. The first letter, dated June 3, 1921, began with a plea for help and spoke of a terrible injustice that needed to be righted. It was addressed to a name Marcus didn't recognize, someone who seemed to have held some power or influence at the time. The details were vague, the writer cautious, but it was clear that something significant had happened, something that had been covered up. Excitement and curiosity surged within Marcus. This could be the breakthrough his thesis needed, a real-life mystery from the past, lying forgotten in the archive. He spent the next hours poring over the letters, piecing together the fragments of the story they told. It was a tale of betrayal, of a crime lost to history, buried under the weight of time and silence. The letters alluded to a location on the university campus, a place Marcus knew well, but in a context he had never imagined. As the archive's clock chimed the hour, signaling the end of the day, Marcus realized he was onto something potentially groundbreaking. He gathered the letters, carefully placing them back into their box, his mind racing with questions. Who had written these letters, and what had happened to them? What was the terrible injustice they spoke of, and why had it been erased from history? Determined to find answers, Marcus decided to visit the reference location the following day, hoping to uncover clues that had lain dormant for a century. As he left the archive, the shadows of the setting sun stretched long across the campus, as if the past itself was reaching out into the present, eager for its secrets to be uncovered. Unbeknownst to Marcus, his discovery would soon draw him into a web of mystery and intrigue that spanned generations. It would connect him with Detective Jordan Hayes and Professor Evelyn Shaw, leading them all on a journey that would uncover truths buried deep within the heart of the university, revealing that some shadows no matter how old, never fully fade away. Chapter 2. Echoes of Murder The morning light spilled over the university campus, casting a serene glow on the historic buildings and manicured lawns. But the tranquility was shattered by the sound of sirens and the hurried footsteps of law enforcement converging on a scene that would soon grip the entire community. Detective Jordan Hayes arrived at the location, a secluded part of the campus known for its ancient oak trees and a small, ornate fountain that had been a gift from a graduating class a century ago. The same location Marcus had resolved to explore further, now cordoned off with yellow tape, flashing lights illuminating the area. A body had been found, a young woman, a student at the university, her life brutally cut short in the early hours of the morning. As Detective Hayes surveyed the scene, he noted the absence of immediate evidence, no clear signs of a struggle or personal items left behind. It was as if the perpetrator had vanished into thin air, leaving behind only the silent witness of the stone and trees. Professor Evelyn Shaw, a respected figure in the history department, happened upon the scene on her morning walk. Known for her expertise in the city's early 20th century history, she was immediately struck by the location's significance, a place she had lectured about just weeks before, discussing its historical and architectural relevance. 
The detective and the professor's paths crossed as Hayes was overseeing the collection of evidence. Shaw's interest in the site and her knowledge of its past caught Hayes's attention, sparking an impromptu conversation between the two. Shaw mentioned the fountain's history, how it was rumored to have been the site of secretive gatherings decades ago, a piece of lore that Hayes, ever the skeptic, filed away as potentially useful context. As the day progressed, the investigation into the student's murder unfolded with frustrating slowness. Hayes found himself returning to the conversation with Professor Shaw, considering the historical angle as more than mere coincidence. Could the past hold clues to the present crime? It was a long shot, but Hayes was no stranger to following unconventional leads. Meanwhile, Marcus, unaware of the morning's grim discovery, made his way to the specified location, eager to connect the dots between the letters and their historical context. Upon arriving, he was met with the chaotic scene of the investigation. The realization hit him with a jolt. The crime he had been researching might have a chilling parallel in the present. Detective Hayes, noticing the young man's arrival in apparent shock, approached him, initiating a conversation that would mark the beginning of an unlikely collaboration. Marcus shared his discovery of the letters and their cryptic references to the location, a revelation that piqued Hayes's interest further. As the day turned into evening, the pieces of a complex puzzle began to align. The murder at the university was not just a tragic event in the present. It echoed a mystery from the past, a shadow that had lingered over the campus for a century. Detective Hayes, Professor Shaw, and Marcus Reed found themselves at the nexus of an investigation that spanned generations. The detective's pragmatism, the professor's historical insight, and the student's curiosity converged, setting them on a path to uncover a truth that someone had gone to great lengths to keep buried. The echoes of murder, both past and present, had found their voices, and the trio was determined to listen, unraveling the secrets that lay hidden beneath the surface of history and the quiet, deceptive calm of the university campus. Chapter 3. Histories Intertwined As the sun rose over the university, casting a soft light on its ivy-covered buildings, Detective Jordan Hayes, Professor Evelyn Shaw, and Marcus Reed convened in a quiet, secluded corner of the campus. The gravity of their task lay heavily in the air, a blend of anticipation and the weight of responsibility. They were about to embark on a journey that would weave together the strands of the past and the present, revealing connections hidden by time's relentless march. Detective Hayes, with his keen investigative mind, laid out the plan. They would start by examining the letters Marcus had found, cross-referencing historical events, and exploring the location of the recent murder for any clues that might have been overlooked. Professor Shaw, her expertise in the city's history invaluable, suggested they delve into the archives of the local newspaper, looking for any reports from a century ago that matched the vague details in the letters. The first breakthrough came unexpectedly. While combing through digitalized newspaper archives, they stumbled upon a small, almost inconsequential report from 1921, buried among pages of more prominent news. It spoke of a tragic accident near the university, a young woman's untimely death, her identity a mystery, the circumstances suspiciously underreported. The parallels were uncanny, mirroring the recent murder with eerie precision. This discovery lent credence to their theory that the events were connected, not just by location, but by a pattern that spanned a century. They dug deeper, unearthing police records from the 1920s, searching for any mention of the incident. The records were sparse, many lost or destroyed over the decades, but a single faded report confirmed a police investigation had indeed taken place, only to be abruptly closed, the case files sealed and forgotten. Armed with this new information, the trio's next step was to revisit the crime scene, viewing it through the lens of their findings. Professor Shaw, with her historical knowledge, guided them through the architectural changes the campus had undergone, pointing out that the secluded spot where the body was found had once been more accessible, a popular gathering place for students. Marcus, meanwhile, focused on the letters, 
trying to decipher any hidden messages or codes that the author might have used to safely communicate the truth of what had happened. His breakthrough came when he realized the dates mentioned in the letters coincided with significant events on the university's calendar, suggesting that the original crime might have been linked to one of these events. Detective Hayes, combining the insights from Shaw and Marcus with his investigative experience, theorized that they were dealing with a secret society or group that had existed within the university for decades. This group, he speculated, could be the key to understanding both the historical crime and the recent murder. The day's end found them back in the archives, surrounded by old maps, photographs, and documents tracing the evolution of the university and its traditions. They discovered references to a secretive club, known only to a select few, its members influential figures in the university's history. This club, they hypothesized, could be the link between the past and present, a custodian of secrets that had managed to evade scrutiny until now. As they pieced together the puzzle, the connections between the century-old letters, the historical crime, and the recent murder began to form a clearer picture. What started as a curious investigation into a forgotten piece of history had morphed into a complex web of intrigue, reaching into the present day. The trio realized they were not just uncovering a story buried by time. They were exposing a legacy of silence and secrets that had shaped the very foundation of the university. The weight of their discovery was profound, setting the stage for a confrontation with truths that some might still be willing to kill to keep hidden. The histories of the past and the present were intertwined, the echoes of old crimes resonating in the modern age, revealing a tapestry of human motivations, desires, and the dark lengths to which some would go to protect their secrets. Detective Hayes, Professor Shaw, and Marcus Reed, each driven by their own reasons, found themselves at the heart of this mystery, committed to unraveling it, no matter where it led or the dangers it post. Chapter 4. Secrets Unveiled The trio's investigation into the interconnected mysteries of past and present had led them to the shadowy threshold of a secret society that had woven itself into the fabric of the university's history. Detective Jordan Hayes, Professor Evelyn Shaw, and Marcus Reed, each motivated by a blend of personal conviction and academic intrigue, found themselves delving deeper into the clandestine world of the university's elite. Their next clue came from an unexpected source. Among the dusty archives, Marcus stumbled upon an old yearbook, its pages filled with the smiling faces of students from a bygone era. Hidden in the margins were cryptic notes, seemingly innocuous, but to the trained eye, they hinted at something more. These notes led them to a list of names, members of a group known as the Keepers, a society that had existed in secrecy since the early 20th century. The revelation of the Keepers prompted Detective Hayes to revisit the case files of the recent murder, looking for any connections that might have been overlooked. It was there, in the background of a photograph taken at the crime scene, that he noticed a symbol, barely visible, carved into the bark of one of the ancient oaks that stood sentinel over the murder site. This symbol, a discreet emblem representing the Keepers, was the tangible link they had been searching for, a thread that connected the modern murder to the century-old mystery. Professor Shaw, with her extensive knowledge of the university's history, guided them through the origins of the Keepers. The society, initially formed as a scholarly club, had evolved over the decades, its purpose shrouded in secrecy its members sworn to uphold the legacy of the university's founding principles. However, as they delved deeper, it became apparent that the society's activities had taken a darker turn, its original scholarly pursuits overshadowed by a more sinister agenda. The investigation took a critical turn when they managed to secure an interview with a former member of The Keepers, now an elderly professor emeritus, long retired from the university. This individual, speaking on the condition of anonymity, revealed that the society had been involved in a series of clandestine activities, 
including the suppression of certain historical events and the manipulation of university policies to suit its members' interests. Armed with this new information, the trio realized that the murder of the young woman and the historical crime were both acts meant to protect the society's secrets, a pattern of behavior that had been perpetuated for generations. The society's influence had infiltrated the highest levels of the university's administration, making their investigation not just a search for truth, but a dangerous game of power and deception. The key to solving the mysteries lay in uncovering the society's current members and their motives. Detective Hayes, leveraging his law enforcement connections, initiated a covert operation to monitor the society's activities. While Professor Shaw and Marcus focused on deciphering the historical documents and letters, looking for any overlooked clues that could lead them to the present-day members. As they pieced together the evidence, a clearer picture emerged of how the Keepers had manipulated events to their advantage, sacrificing innocent lives in their quest to maintain control and secrecy. The murder of the young woman was a modern echo of the century-old crime, a chilling reminder of the lengths to which the society was willing to go to protect its legacy. The climax of their investigation came when they uncovered a hidden meeting place of the Keepers, located beneath the very grounds of the university. It was there, in the shadows of the underground chamber, that the trio confronted the current members of the society, exposing their secrets to the light of day. The confrontation was tense, a standoff between the Keepers of the university's darkest secrets and those who sought to reveal the truth. Detective Hayes, with the evidence they had gathered, presented an ultimatum to the society's members, offering them a chance to come forward and face justice for their crimes. The resolution of the confrontation was a turning point in the investigation, marking the beginning of the end for the Keepers. Their secrets unveiled. The society's grip on the university began to unravel, exposing a web of corruption and deceit that had hidden in plain sight for generations. The revelations brought about by the investigation would have far-reaching implications for the university, initiating a period of reflection and reform. For Detective Hayes, Professor Shaw, and Marcus Reed, their journey into the heart of the university's hidden history had not only solved the mysteries of the past and present, but had also laid the groundwork for a future where the truth would no longer be buried beneath layers of secrecy and power. Chapter 5. Beneath the Surface The dimly lit corridors beneath the university's venerable halls held the silence of secrets long kept. Detective Jordan Hayes, Professor Evelyn Shaw, and Marcus Reed descended into the depths, their path illuminated by flickering torches that cast elongated shadows against the ancient stone walls. They were venturing into the heart of the mystery, a hidden chamber that served as the meeting place for the Keepers, the secret society whose existence had intertwined the fates of the past and present. As they navigated the labyrinthine passages, the weight of history pressed down upon them, each step taking them further into the belly of the university's hidden world. The chamber, when they finally arrived, was a vast, cavernous space, the walls lined with shelves filled with documents, artifacts, and symbols that chronicled the society's century-long influence over the university. In the center of the room stood a large, ornate table, its surface covered with maps, letters, and various esoteric objects. It was here that the society had convened, plotting their actions in the shadows, their decisions shaping the destiny of the university and its members. The air was thick with the residue of decisions made and actions taken, a palpable sense of the power that had emanated from this very place. Detective Hayes, his investigative instincts honed over years of service, began to systematically search the chamber, looking for evidence that would link the society to the recent murder, as well as the century-old crime. Professor Shaw, meanwhile, was drawn to the historical artifacts, her expert eye identifying items and documents that provided a direct connection to the events described in the letters Marcus had discovered. Marcus, for his part, was captivated by the personal journals and notes scattered among the official documents, 
the handwritten thoughts of society members, revealing the moral and ethical quandaries some had faced. These personal accounts offered a glimpse into the internal struggles within the Keepers, the weight of their actions bearing heavily on some, while others embraced the society's ethos without question. The breakthrough came when Detective Hayes uncovered a series of photographs, hidden in a false bottom, of one of the drawers. The photographs, dating back to the early 20th century and leading up to the present day, captured society members in various stages of their involvement, including images of the young woman who had been murdered and of the historical figure central to the century-old crime. These photographs served as a tangible link between the keepers and the crimes they had sought to conceal, a damning piece of evidence that could not be ignored. Armed with this new evidence, the trio prepared to confront the current members of the society, those who had continued to perpetuate the legacy of secrecy and manipulation. But as they made to leave the chamber, they were startled by the sound of footsteps echoing through the corridors, the approach of someone or someone's unaware of the chamber's current occupants. It was a contingent of the Keepers, led by a figure known only by his title within the society, the Guardian. A tense standoff ensued, the chamber's claustrophobic confines amplifying the gravity of the confrontation. Detective Hayes stepped forward, evidence in hand, his voice steady as he detailed their findings, the undeniable connections between the society and the crimes they were implicated in. The Guardian, faced with the irrefutable evidence of their deeds, recognized the futility of further denial. In a moment charged with the weight of a century's secrets being laid bare, he began to speak, offering a confession that would unravel the last threads of the mystery, providing the final pieces needed to complete the puzzle. The confessions and revelations that followed illuminated the true extent of the Keeper's influence and the depth of their transgressions. It became clear that the society had lost its way, straying far from its original scholarly intentions into a realm of darkness and deceit. As the truth emerged, the chamber, once a symbol of power and secrecy, transformed into a courtroom of sorts, where the past was judged by the present. The evidence gathered by Hayes, Shaw, and Reed served as the basis for legal proceedings that would see the Keepers held accountable for their actions, the start of a long process of justice and reconciliation for the university and the families affected by the society's deeds. The discovery beneath the university's surface not only solved the intertwined mysteries of past and present, but also marked the beginning of a new chapter for the institution. A chapter characterized by transparency, accountability, and a commitment to ensuring that the shadows of the past would no longer cloud the future. For Detective Hayes, Professor Shaw, and Marcus Reed, the journey into the heart of the university's hidden history was a testament to the enduring quest for truth, a reminder that even the deepest secrets, no matter how well buried, could be brought to light. Their collaboration, a fusion of investigative rigor, academic expertise, and youthful determination, had unraveled a century-old mystery, setting the stage for healing and change. Chapter 6. Legacy of Truth The aftermath of the revelations within the hidden chamber beneath the university campus rippled through the community, sparking a period of introspection and reform. The once shadowy existence of the Keepers was now exposed to the scrutiny of the public eye their century-long influence ending in a crescendo of legal and social consequences. Detective Jordan Hayes, Professor Evelyn Shaw, and Marcus Reed found themselves at the center of a story that had captivated the city, heralded as the unlikely trio who had brought light to the darkest corners of the university's history. In the weeks that followed, the university began the painstaking process of reckoning with its past. The evidence uncovered by Hayes, Shaw, and Reed formed the basis of a comprehensive investigation, leading to the dismantling of the Keepers and the implementation of measures to ensure such a society could never wield such power again. The university's administration, under intense public pressure, 
initiated a series of reforms aimed at promoting transparency and accountability, acknowledging the institution's role in allowing the keepers to operate in the shadows. For Detective Hayes, the resolution of the case marked a significant milestone in his career, the successful conclusion of one of the most complex and personally challenging investigations he had ever undertaken. The experience had not only tested his investigative skills, but it also forced him to confront his own beliefs about justice and the importance of confronting the past, no matter how uncomfortable the truths uncovered might be. Professor Shaw, for her part, found herself at the forefront of a new academic initiative focused on uncovering and documenting the hidden histories of the university. The revelations about the Keepers had underscored the importance of historical transparency and she was determined to ensure that the lessons learned from the investigation would be remembered and studied for generations to come. Her collaboration with Hayes and Reed had highlighted the value of interdisciplinary approaches to solving complex problems, a principle she was keen to embed in her future work. Marcus Reed, the young history student whose curiosity had set the events in motion, emerged from the experience with a renewed sense of purpose. The investigation had been a crucible, transforming his academic interest in history into a passionate commitment to uncovering the truth, no matter how buried it might be. His role in solving the mystery had not only earned him accolades, but had also solidified his career path, inspiring him to pursue a future in historical research, dedicated to bringing the lessons of the past to bear on the present. The legacy of the investigation was a testament to the power of truth, a reminder that even the most entrenched secrets could be uncovered, and that justice, though sometimes delayed, was attainable. The university, once a bastion of secrecy and power, was now a beacon of change, its commitment to reckoning with its past a model for institutions grappling with their own hidden histories. As the story of the Keepers, Detective Hayes, Professor Shaw, and Marcus Reed became a part of the university's lore, it served as a cautionary tale about the dangers of unchecked power and the importance of vigilance in the pursuit of truth. The legacy of truth they had helped to uncover was a beacon, guiding the university toward a future where the shadows of the past no longer held sway over the destiny of the present. In the quiet moments after the storm had passed, Hayes, Shaw, and Reed reflected on their journey recognizing that their collaboration had not only solved a mystery, but had also forged a bond that would endure. They had been united by a common purpose, their diverse skills complementing each other in the pursuit of a goal far greater than any one of them could have achieved alone. As the university moved forward, the legacy of their investigation remained, a reminder of the importance of confronting the past, of the relentless pursuit of truth, and of the indomitable spirit of those who seek justice, no matter the cost. The story of the Keepers and the secrets unveiled beneath the surface of the university campus had ended, but the impact of what was uncovered would resonate for years to come, a legacy of truth that would inform the future in ways yet to be imagined. Chapter 7. Reflections In the quiet aftermath of the investigation that had captivated a university and its surrounding community, Detective Jordan Hayes, Professor Evelyn Shaw, and Marcus Reed found themselves in the serene setting of the university's oldest library. Surrounded by centuries of knowledge, they gathered not just as the architects of a significant uncovering, but as individuals forever changed by their shared journey. The library a symbol of the pursuit of truth and understanding, provided the perfect backdrop for their reflections on the events that had unfolded. They were no longer just detective, professor, and student. They had become custodians of a profound truth, bonded by an experience that transcended their initial roles. Detective Hayes leaned back in his chair, the weight of the investigation still evident in his thoughtful gaze. He had seen much in his career, but this case had been different. It challenged him to reconsider the nature of justice and the importance of historical truth. We've not just solved a crime, he mused aloud. We've uncovered a century's worth of silence. 
it makes you wonder what other truths are buried just beneath the surface, waiting to be found. His reflection was not just on the case, but on the broader implications of their discoveries for law enforcement and society. Professor Shaw adjusted her glasses, her eyes alight with the fire of intellectual curiosity that had driven her throughout the investigation. This has been a stark reminder of the power of history, she observed, not just as a record of what has happened, but as a living, breathing influence on the present. We've given voice to those silenced by time, and in doing so we've reshaped our understanding of the university and its legacy. Her thoughts turned to the future, to the students who would walk the campus paths, now armed with a fuller understanding of their institution's complex history. Marcus Reed, the youngest of the trio, felt a sense of awe at the role he had played in bringing the truth to light. I started this journey looking for a topic for my thesis, he said, a hint of wonder in his voice. I never imagined it would lead us here. It's shown me the real impact that research can have, not just on academia, but on real lives. It's a responsibility I don't take lightly. For Marcus, the investigation had been a formative experience, shaping his path forward and solidifying his commitment to uncovering and telling the stories that matter. As they shared their reflections, it became clear that the investigation had been more than just a quest for justice. It had been a journey of personal growth and discovery. They had delved into the darkest corners of the university's history, confronting challenges and obstacles that tested their resolve and their commitment to the truth. The conversation turned to the future, to the changes already underway at the university as a result of their findings. Transparency initiatives, historical accountability projects, and a renewed commitment to ethical governance were just the beginning. The legacy of their investigation would live on, not just in the policies and practices of the institution, but in the awareness and engagement of its community. As the meeting drew to a close, the trio stood together, looking out at the campus. The sun was setting, casting a golden glow over the buildings and grounds that had been the backdrop to their remarkable journey. They understood that their work had changed the university forever, but more importantly, it had changed them. Detective Hayes, Professor Shaw and Marcus Reed had started this journey as individuals brought together by circumstance. They ended it as collaborators, friends, and guardians of a truth that would guide the university into a new era. Their reflections in the quiet of the library were a testament to the impact of their work, a reminder of the enduring power of curiosity, courage, and collaboration in the pursuit of truth. As they parted ways, the legacy of their investigation remained, a beacon of light in the pursuit of justice and understanding. A story of how the past, no matter how deeply buried, could be brought to light, reshaping the present and informing the future. The university would move forward, but the echoes of what they had uncovered would resonate for generations to come, a testament to the power of truth and the unbreakable bond forged in its pursuit.